Dive into God's Word. Dig a little deeper. Discover the Bible's message for you today. Pathway to Paradise Ministries presents Deeper, your daily Bible study with Dr. Tim Rumsey and Pastor David Salazar. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. We continue our study of Daniel chapter 11 here on Deeper, your daily Bible study. And today the title of our lesson is Daniel 11 and the Glorious Land, part two. We're going to continue looking at this concept, this idea of the glorious land, not only in Daniel 11, but throughout the Bible. And uh, we're going to be focusing in especially on the Holy Spirit's connection with that. Uh, Some very interesting things. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the uh, technology that makes this kind of study group possible. Wherever we are, whatever we might be doing right now, we thank you that we can be uh, studying your word. uh, And we just ask for your Holy Spirit to guide and to direct us today. Lord, this is a challenging chapter, Daniel chapter 11, yet it's in the Bible. And um, Daniel says he understood it, and so we want to understand it too. We realize this can only happen with your help, and so we ask for your help in understanding. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, in yesterday's lesson, we saw that the glorious land, mentioned in Daniel 11, verse 41, may represent the place or the experience where righteous characters can be formed. Today, this land can represent or might represent Revelation's remnant church, which has been entrusted with the everlasting gospel and the three angels' messages. These messages reveal the power of God unto salvation. As Paul said in Romans chapter 1, uh, the gospel does this. It, it, it reveals his power, and specifically in Romans one seventeen, we see what the focus of that power is. Paul says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, uh, that the righteous might live by faith. Today we're going to see that the entire book of Daniel, and especially its four parallel lines of prophecy, may very well focus in on the message of righteousness by faith and its accompanying promise of victory over sin in Christ's name or through Christ's power. Now, to begin, let's review the four parallel lines of prophecy that are found in Daniel, and we're going to give special attention to the new information that is found in each one. In Daniel chapter 2, an outline of world empires is given, and these powers begin with Babylon and end with Christ's second coming. Apart from the stone that represents God's kingdom at the end of that dream, the entire dream in Daniel chapter 2 focuses on events taking place in the world, secular powers, um, secular kingdoms that are coming and going. Now in Daniel 7, we have a repetition of Daniel 2 with the same four world empires, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. This is all repeated. Of course, there are some additional details and information given about each one of those powers. It's a more detailed prophecy than Daniel chapter 2. But the really new piece of information and the really significant uh, piece of information dealing or, or in connection with what God does is the judgment in Daniel chapter 7. Of course, we have the little horn that's also added in this chapter, but that's really more information about the fourth beast. Uh, more information about Rome. So it's more information about what's happening on earth. The new information that deals with God and what God does is the judgment in Daniel chapter 7. Now we move to the third uh, line of prophecy, and that's Daniel chapter 8, and we could say Daniel chapter 9 uh, also. Here we find a repetition of Daniel chapter 2 and 7. So again, we have the same flow of history. Of course, in Daniel 8, the... um, Uh, The first world empire mentioned is uh, Persia, not Babylon. But then we have Persia and Greece. We have the little horn mentioned once again in Daniel chapter 8. And then we have the really new and significant piece of new information in Daniel 8, and that's in Daniel 8.14. That's the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary, and it's added as a further explanation of the judgment and how God deals with sin. now, hopefully you've been joining us, and you know, a few weeks ago we really studied Daniel chapters 8 and 9 closely, and we saw that this cleansing of the sanctuary really brings out how God deals with sin. And um, 
We talked about the Day of Atonement, its connections uh, here with how God would remove sin from Israel. The record of sin would be cleansed. And at the end of this day every year, the people of the nation of Israel was to consider themselves standing before God cleansed of sin on the Day of Atonement. And so, again, in Daniel chapter 8, we see a focus or an emphasis on how God deals with sin. That brings us to the fourth and final time that this line of prophecy is gone through in the book of Daniel. And Daniel chapters 10 through 12, and especially 11, where the heart of the prophecy is, uh, or the bulk of it, I should say, we see a repetition again of Daniel chapters 2, 7, and 8, with a focus this time in chapter 11 on the glorious land and its promise of forming a righteous character through faith in God's covenant of salvation and Christ's righteousness. And I said an awful lot right there in that sentence. Hopefully you were with us yesterday where we saw that the glorious land uh, may very well point to an experience um, and, and to God's promises to create his character in people. In other words, it's a place or an experience where righteous characters can be formed. If that is indeed the case, then um, Daniel 11 focuses in a special way on righteousness. And um, with this outline in place now, let's continue with our study. We're going to actually spend the bulk of our time today in John chapter 16. And in John chapter 16, Jesus is explaining the work of the Holy Spirit. He's promising the gift of the Holy Spirit to his disciples. Of course, Jesus is about to be arrested and, and uh, crucified. And um, Jesus says some very interesting things about the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read a few verses beginning in John 16, beginning in verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that, whatso, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. Now, in these first couple of verses here, Jesus is explaining the actions of the world, of the unbelieving world. He's warning his disciples, you know, you're going to face persecution. You're going to face opposition. Don't be surprised and don't let it shake or destroy your faith in me. Um, you know these things will happen, and so at the beginning of John chapter sixteen, as Jesus is uh, working up to this promise of the Holy Spirit or the Comforter, he is explaining the actions uh, that will you know be taking place within the world. In this sense, John 16, verses 1 through 3, might be compared to the dream in Daniel chapter 2, in which the actions of the world are prophesied leading up to Christ's second coming. Again, in John 16, Jesus is leading up to the promise of the Holy Spirit, and he's describing the actions of the world first. In Daniel 2, we have the actions of these world empires described, and it leads up to the uh, second coming of Jesus Christ. Let's keep reading and see what else Jesus says as he uh, explains the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, jumping now to John 16, verse 7, and uh, we'll read 7 through 11. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Now, some very important works of the Holy Spirit, aspects of the Holy Spirit's work are brought out here. Three uh, specifically, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit or the Comforter will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Now, these are three really important works, aren't they? And let's compare these three works of the Holy Spirit to the new information given in Daniel 7, Daniel 8, and Daniel uh, 11 uh, in regards to what God's work is in this world just before the second coming. In Daniel 7, we saw that the really important new piece of information in regards to God's work is the judgment. And this is one of the things that Jesus says the Holy Spirit does. He reproves the world of judgment. 
in Daniel 8, we saw that the really significant new piece of information in regards to what God is doing uh, just before the second coming deals with um, sin, you know, the cleansing of the sanctuary, how God deals with sin. Again, in John 16, Jesus says that one of the works uh, or aspects of the Holy Spirit's work is that he will reprove the world of sin. And that leaves uh, righteousness. Again, in John 16, verse 8, Jesus says, when he is come, the Holy Spirit, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So if Daniel 7 really focuses on God's judgment, and Daniel 8 focuses on how God deals with sin, if indeed we can uh, use John 16 as uh, a way to help us understand God's work in the book of Daniel, that leaves uh, righteousness, some explanation of righteousness or promise of righteousness as the focus in Daniel chapters 10 through 12. Let's read the next uh, two verses in John chapter 16. After Jesus explains the work of the Holy Spirit and brings out these three things, reproving the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment, then Jesus says this in John 16, verse 13. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Jesus says two times in John 16, verse 13, that the Holy Spirit, uh, first of all, he is the spirit of truth, and that he will guide uh, the disciples into all truth. Remember that one of the recurring things that we are told about this last prophecy in Daniel is that it is the truth. Daniel 10, verse 1, Daniel says this thing was true. Uh, The angel tells Daniel at the end of chapter 10, I will show you the truth. And that's repeated in Daniel 11, verse 2. Here is the truth. Jesus says the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us into all truth. And um, some very interesting connections there. Let's finish by looking at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And um, very well-known prophetic passage describing what happens here on earth just before the second coming. And we have Paul's explanation here of the man of sin that exalts himself against God and the mystery of iniquity that works. And then Paul says this, beginning in verse um, 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not in the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Friends, God wants us to believe the truth. He's given that to us in the Bible. He's given to that uh, to us in prophecy. But even more important than understanding truth on an intellectual level is that we experience truth, that we experience God's work in our lives, that we allow the Holy Spirit to work a change in us so that we may have God's righteousness in our lives. This is the focus, I believe, of Daniel chapter 11. It's really the focus of the entire book of Daniel, that God wants you, he wants your family to experience his righteousness in your life. And uh, praise God that he has promised to work this miracle for you, for each one of us, if we will allow him to. Uh, In this sense, the glorious land is this experience where we have Christ's righteousness at work in our lives. And uh, again, we can be thankful that Jesus has promised that we can each live spiritually in this glorious land where his righteousness controls us, where he gives us his victory over our sin and our temptation. We're out of time. Thank you for joining us. Please join again tomorrow. Deeper is a production of Pathway to Paradise Ministries. For more Bible study resources, including books, DVDs, and study guides, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. To support this ministry with your tax-deductible contribution, visit pathwaytoparadise.org or call toll-free 855-HIS-TRUTH. That's 855-447-8788.